So first things first, Dominic. How are you? We're in weird times of life, so... Yes, we are indeed, man. How are you coping? It's, it's all very odd, isn't it? It's very weird. I know I keep, I keep, I keep saying weird in interviews and I sound like a bit <laughs> of a, an idiot because it sounds like I'm trying to plug my song, but it is weird, do you know what I mean, right now? And I feel very trapped and very bizarre, but I don't know, man. I feel like there's a lot of love in the air. There's a lot of love out there right now, especially kind of in terms of humans. You know, I mean, everyone's very, like, loving very fucking hippie, you know? One thing about this song, can be mistaken, but you, you wrote this in December 2019 when nothing of this was kind of yeah. going on yet. So can you take me back to that day or that week when you wrote this song? Absolutely. I was experiencing, I was at the end of the weirdest time in my life ever imaginable at that minute. I mean, I never sure. knew this was going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> last year, that was like the weirdest time of my life. Um, and I'd had, I'd had the craziest year because a lot of things had happened to me in my life and this record is a coming of age song. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, and, and coming of age doesn't necessarily mean to me growing up because grow, you can come of age at 95. You know what I mean? When sure, you're older. Sure, yes. But I think... It was a song where I'd experienced, I nearly lost my mum in a car accident. Mm. I, we got really successful very quickly. I fell in love. I experienced heartbreak. <laughs> and then we played a big show in November at Brixton Academy and a big mm. tour. And this was, and I realised in my head, this was everything I ever wanted to do. And, and it was almost the dreams were becoming a reality. Right. And, and I was like, this has just been a dark, bizarre, twisted, beautiful, though, time of my life. Right. And I've learned a lot about myself. And, and it kind of led me to realize and write a song about no matter how dark things may get, that you're going to look back on it and just go, that part, that time of my life was just weird. That was just weird. Right, you know, you know that when you get through it, you'll 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 be a little bit more optimistic about kind of uh, what you've experienced in a sense. The time that's what they say: time heals wounds. So, so having a bit of separation. But when you um, wrote that song, because I can imagine you, you especially the second part, uh, part of what you mentioned, you've uh, become successful quite quickly. So were you prepared for that? Was it because the other two things are very personal, and I'm not gonna uh, pry in in that sense. But um, the music thing, what was it? Was it difficult to to kind of deal with all of a sudden being in that high of a demand and people wanting things? It was as I say. As I say, I love my family so much. I call mm. my fan base my family because I don't. I don't. Fan base is like eh, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Sure. But as I say, to kind of walk down a street and people to know who you are and to fight, to suddenly have a man following you with a camera if you're going out for coffee <clears> is <throat> such a weird situation. You know what I mean? Obviously, like, you, your life does change and it does kind of become, like, all, all on camera and, and you have <laughs> right. to kind of de come to terms with that. Because all your insecurities that are going to come out naturally are now going to be recorded for mm. ever, and that that moment of realization or that moment of sadness is going to be on tape forever, and that's that's scary and difficult to come to terms with. So I think that did make me feel very odd and very bizarre, you know. Sure. Let's go. On. I don't know if 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 we have to go further back for this, but what I find very interesting then is because. You've, you've talked about your insecurities, I, I mean, since I've heard of you. You've always been very open uh, with your insecurities. So what was it like then to have a community, you, you call it your family, to, to accept that? And, and to, oh, was dude, that a big turning point for you? It was, just, it was just everything I ever dreamed of. I mean, I could cry. Like, I always get, like, pretty emotional when I think about that because I was at a point in my life where... Right. I was just, re I was genuinely like ready to just like take too many pills one night. Do you know what I mean? I genuinely was, I really right. felt 
scared and frightened and the, the world that I was in didn't get me and I didn't belong in this one. I belonged somewhere else. And that's really sad and really scary thing that comes to terms with. But then suddenly I came to the Netherlands and I came to, no, seriously, I, I came to the, the Netherlands and I played with, I remember we played Melkweg. Right. The small room upstairs. Okay. The theater room. Yes. And 100, 120, 150 people turned up and they knew every word to two songs yeah. I got out. We played a six song set. We played the 20 minutes. Mm. And I went, and I spoke to every single one of them after the show. Okay. And I realized, and, and they were exactly like me. And they got me, and they, they listened to me, and they heard me. And <clears throat> that was really important and really special to me. Mm. And, and so it, it's kind of because I heard you say about this that that kind of all of the, all you want out of this music in, in in essence is to people to give people who are going through a hard time to give them some form of escape or just make help them make feel better. So this and then with an eye on weird now with that optimistic mes message of it, it is going to be all right. Is that where where kind of that optimism for you started flowing again? That's it, man. As I say, like I was so angry at the first record and sad because no one got me. You know what I mean? The society didn't get us as a community. So I was mm. fighting for us and I was angry. And I was like, fuck you. You're going to get us one day. You're going to get us. You're going to understand us. But then how can I be angry anymore? Because we're growing so quickly mm. and people are understanding me and I'm meeting parents who are accepting the kids for, for, for fucking being gay or being tattooed or being different. And I'm meeting people who, who would change in schools because they felt like the community could do that. Or I'm meeting people like who whose wives just left them or husbands just left them and they're at the show for this reason. And mm. going, we have each other if we fall backwards. Right. So how can I be angry? All I can be is optimistic and hopeful to grow this community to people who feel like they don't feel like they can be who they are. They are. Mm. Right keep going and going and going and going and going and it kind of made it so interesting because some people like it's interesting what we're going through right now because people still don't get us yet but mm. that doesn't anger me that makes me just want to convince them even more mm. you know what i mean or pity well, them well, a little. Of, of course because i, I well, my, my my opinion opinion on this all is, is kind of progress is unfortunately unfortunately very slow. It's it's not always it is, as quick as, as you want. And it that's to the be. thing. It's like we are completely out of the box. I think mm. as people and the way we think and the way we dress and the way we look, and we're very kind of loud and naughty <laughs> and unapologetic. And I don't think society is still very much. Even though, do you know what I mean? People say it's very open. Like, there is still the mm. fucking gatekeepers going, calm down, remain calm, remain calm. And it's like, well, we don't want to remain calm. We're ourselves and we're going right. to celebrate it and we're going to go mad and we're going to be happy about that. And everyone's like, oh, what, 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 whoa, 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 what do you mean? You know what I mean? And, and it's, 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 it's fun. It's fucking fun. Right. And unfortunately, we can't have those gatherings anymore where we can express those feelings uh, because of the virus. And then you can, so, so can you tell me the, what is your, what is going through your consciousness when you perform live in a way? The, what, what is an evening like that for you, from your perspective? I feel like I, I feel like I discovered electricity. Okay. You know, I mean, all you stand on stage and all this chaos and madness is going on around you and everyone's just mad and screaming and jumping over each other and hugging each other and smiling and crying. And there's just a massive energy in the room that just smacks you in the face. But you're on stage just taking it all in completely still and going, whoa. And it's where I feel, for the first time in my life, at peace. Mm. I'm kind of in a trance when everyone else, I'm in a trance, like, I'm in a daze. I'm in a confusion and everyone else is just 
ah! and I'm just like, whoa. It's crazy. It's the most mental thing in the world. That's an interesting thought because I can imagine because that craziness was in essence uh, your life for the last couple of years. I mean, you've been very busy. You've been working on a record and, and then all of a sudden there's this sudden halt and you, know, you don't really get to leave the house. And that. So is this the moment that you can reflect and is this the kind of where, where you look back at things? Absolutely. I think, I think that's it, man. I think to be honest, like we haven't really stopped. I can't mm. stop. If I stop, I'm like a happy shark. If I stop, I die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we, we've been just trying to remain as connected as possible, even though we can't play live. Mm. But I think this is a time, I think Mother Earth, if you like, we're outside and too big, is giving us a slap across the back of the head because as humans, we've been neglecting the planet and neglecting humanity for so long and neglecting mm. loving each other. So it's time to reflect and tell the people you love that you love them and just to just take a breath and figure out what is next, mm. you know? And in this sense, obviously, I can imagine for you what's next is you want to get home to your family, but... Um, oh, yeah, I want to get back on tour. Oh, fair enough. But when when it comes to the album, because uh, can I assume it's done, right? Hey. The, the new the album, album yeah, is Yeah, the album's done? finished. Because... Mm -hmm. uh, Well, the weird was I think you wanted to release it earlier, but because it's it's very significant now, it's it's, it's a good time. To, so, so what are your thoughts on the album then? On how you how you're going to proceed say, with the album? I say that's what this record is about. Weird was a big catalyst into starting the whole process. Weird okay. went boom, and turned the fucking okay. engine on. Do you know what I mean? And it's like I want to write an album about life as a whole, mm. about sexual liberation about identity, liberation in terms of identity, about love, about heartbreak, about drugs, <laughs> about mental health, about an untrivialized, uncensored, neat whiskey version of what life is. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Because one thing that I'm... A little bit older than you, but do you feel when, when kind of when, when you were younger listening to the radio, did you do you feel that was lacking in a sense that that people weren't taking younger people? Yeah, seriously? man. No, yeah. no one's no one was listening, and no one made me feel like I have a voice. Mm. So I want people to feel out there like they have a voice. I want to push it out of them if they feel like they haven't got it. I want to push them and prod them and prod them and prod them and prod them and like. And they don't understand. I'm like, why are you prodding me? Why are you prodding me? And it's like, why are you silence? And then they finally snap and go, because I've got a fucking voice. Mm -hmm. And then I go, yeah, you do. Final question then to round off. When you were, like you say, earlier you struggled uh, with depression and those kind of things in your life. What was the thing? And then you mentioned kind of... Um, that performing music helped you out of it, but but what was the thing that even motivated you to either make music or get up on stage? Because I I can imagine that alone can be a hard thing in those, when you think- As, I, as well. I say, it was just a thing that happened. It was where I slotted into my school. People were either in bands or in the football team. Mm. I wanted to be in a band. But then obviously you did take to it because you play, now play a bunch of instruments and you have a yeah, very did, like, diverse- As I say, I, I just loved it. As soon as I, I'll never forget the feeling when I was younger and I heard my, uh, my song come out nonsensically in, in, my, in the rehearsal studio with my band. Mm. And I was like, that came out of my head and now I can hear it and it's in the room and it's with me. And I, like, I was like, whoa, that's mental. <laughs> I one got the bug. Thing, yeah, one last thing then. If, if you think about that, uh, kind of the first time singing and then where you are now, what... what How would you, some, in, if you can, in a couple of words, how would you describe what you've been through in the last five, six years? A weird time of life. <laughs> There you go. A weird mental journey that just twists and turns, but I'm loving every second of the roller coaster. Excellent. Dominic, thank you very much for your time. Thank you All right, thank so you. much. I'll see you later, bro. Bye, All right, bye. have a good one. Bye-bye. Safe.